what if you got the direct instruction at home and then we did the stuff at home in class? And so we looked and said, okay, let's do it. And so we committed the next year to, if you will, do what's become known as the flipped classroom. I admit, when I first heard the phrase flipped classroom, this popped into my head. But I knew that probably wasn't right. So then I figured it meant the teacher and the students switched places. But that's not it either. Here's the real definition coming from one of the founders of the flipped classroom movement. The flipped classroom is really a very simple idea. So the direct instruction, what people often call the lecture, is not done in the class, but typically done outside of the class. And then what used to be done at home, the homework is now in the class. You're flipping the homework and the direct instruction. For teachers, what's gonna happen is they're gonna change the role. They're gonna be more facilitators of learning. They're gonna actually help kids at their deepest pain point, the things they struggle with the most. You're gonna be present with them in the class when that happens. One piece, to make that happen, here. Teachers record their lessons so students watch at home, take notes, and come into class the next day ready to work. The teacher creates a short video about a particular lesson. So let's say you're a math teacher, you're a high school math teacher, and you're teaching some algebraic concept, okay? So you're going to teach that algebraic concept on the video. The kids are then going to come to class, and then they've already got some pre-learning. You're going to check to make sure that they've watched it. You're going to check to make sure they've got some decent understanding of it, not complete. And then you're going to give an assignment on, well, whatever the math concept is. The kids are they going to work on that math concept in the class. Now, I want to also encourage you teachers to not just have them just like do a worksheet and a video, but also have some kind of an activity that takes it deeper, that's, that's more engaging, some kind of a project or some kind of an inquiry activity or whatever. I mean, it's still okay for your students to you know, do problems and whatever, that's okay, but don't just do that. Back to the part about recording lessons. Turns out it doesn't require hiring Scorsese or even a camera crew. So some teachers will simply like take their cell phone and they will film a lesson, you know, you standing at the chalkboard. The most common tool, though, is what we call a screencasting tool. This is a tool that records your screen plus your voice. There's many tools that do screencasting. And then some people will use like a document camera, and they point downward, and then you can just write on the paper, and um, it records that. There's a kind of a new one, the glass board model, where the teachers are actually just writing on a glass board and recording it, and they have to flip the image. There's little tricks on that, but it really is a, it's kind of a new, engaging way that's just kind of popped in the last Oh, I'd say six to eight months that I've, at least I've become aware of it, and maybe it's been around longer, but I've been kind of impressed with it lately. So what if you're a teacher and you're thinking, sure, all the techie teachers are gonna jump on this. I don't even have a smartphone. Well, there's also teachers who are jumping on this who are ones you wouldn't expect. They're teachers who are good teachers who realize that, you know, the world's changed. We're teaching the YouTube generation and they wanna learn. And if they can be shown that the tools of the technology are easy, it really changes the whole game for teachers. One piece of advice I have for administrators who are trying to get a flip program is, is they need to get the right group of teachers to pilot it. Don't just think, oh, I want the young techie teachers. No, 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 we need that experienced teacher who's been there for 20 years, who's afraid of technology. Get him, get her on board, and um, you'll get your program up and running a lot faster. Okay, but why not use existing resources? There are a million tutorials and lessons online already. You know, good teaching's always been about relationships and connections. And when the teacher's the one who creates the content, there's just that deeper connection. You can use other people's content, but I found best practices is when the teacher's the creator of the content. Even if the production value isn't super great and there's a mistake and, you know, the nose is cut off, it's their teacher with her voice speaking to her kids. It makes all the difference in the world. After we flipped our classroom, there are e even better ways to sort of incorporate flipped in, so we moved to what we called flipped mastery. So in a mastery system, when a kid gets to the end of chapter one, they have to pass the test. If they don't pass the test, they stay in chapter one. And then when they get to the end of chapter two, they have to all pass the test. And what happens is they're moving through the content at a flexible pace, and it was the best thing we ever did. The flipped classroom was great, the flipped mastery classroom was the awesomest thing. I don't actually want teachers to just flip their class. I want them to flip their class and move beyond the flipped classroom to deeper strategies like flipped mastery and flipped with project-based. This is where we need to get to because it helps students understand the content so much better. You need to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, okay? So keep going. 